Hey man, I'm looking for a PC and it's got to have four cores, eight threads in it. Oh yeah, bro, you got to go for an AMD Ryzen, mate. Yeah, get a Ryzen in there, yeah. Get an AMD Ryzen, bro. 24 threads. That's how many cores and threads, tech yes citizens, you are going to be getting in today's used meets new PC. Now, we're using the TD500 mesh from Cooler Master. They're coming into the game with the RGB fans pre-installed into a case that it supposedly has good airflow. We'll be putting that to the test later on in this video. Let's talk about some of the parts that's going in this, whoa, you beaut, amazing gaming PC that's also going to be a workstation PC since we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, we're putting in a two terabyte NVMe SSD and we've got a 2060 Super. Let's get this party started. You just built a new PC and bought a motherboard off Amazon, AliExpress, eBay, it doesn't matter where you bought the board. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 single end X64 user license, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 USD using the coupon code TYCSK in the description below. You can save 12% and all you do is once you get that key, bang it in, click activate and you're good to go. Links in the description below. This right here is the 2060 Super 8 gigabyte. Now, the good thing about the RTX series, at least with this one in particular, is it's the cheapest card coming into the RTX lineup with eight gigabytes of VRAM. In Australia, you can currently pick these up for 650 Aussie dollars. In the US, they're about 399 USD. And honestly, given the circumstances in the world right now, this isn't too bad a price. They're going through some of the other components here, of course, the 12 core being the 2678 V3. We took a look at this in a separate video, I'll put the link up here, where you're getting 12 cores, 24 threads of Haswell IPC, which supports all the latest and greatest functions, but it's coming in at a price point that practically everyone can afford. And the gaming performance, as well as the workstation performance, is really good. Now, another good thing about this CPU is that the motherboard for it is only 76 bucks, and also the RAM, we can get away with using using 2133 megahertz, which is coming in at $120 for 32 gigabytes of this stuff. So everything from the start to finish in this build just screams budget workstation, but we're still using the quality since we will be using a V650 watt gold power supply, as well as using a low profile Noctua cooler, which has downdraft air to blow uh, air over the VRM to keep the motherboard cool, as well as the CPU. So in terms of how much this thing costs, I'll put the Aussie and the US dollar pricing up here on the screen for you guys. With that aside, we've got a build to quickly finish and then test the temperatures and see how it performs. Let's get this party started for the second time now. No, I don't want a party, said the RTX 2060 Super in his lazy, dopey and confused voice. It's cringing so hard, man. Oh, it's cringing, cringing, cringing. Did you just really cringe up that? Oh my god. Dude, you know you're gonna get grease in that thing. It's gonna affect the temperature. Oh my god, god. why the grease in that thing, bro? Oh, crinkle cut cringe chips. And now here is the final build completed. And I gotta say, this case is a looker in itself. And what we've decided to do here is put in a Redux Noctua fan just to match this uh, silver cooler here. Sort of give it a bit of a stealthy kind of look in the process. And there's another reason for that. And that is if we added another ARGB fan in this case, unfortunately we've only got the uh, three prong included with this case, which hooks up to the three front RGB fans in the controller. So if you want to hook in a fourth additional ARGB fan, then you're going to need either a splitter, 
or another control unit, which is just gonna to add to the cost. It really isn't gonna give you a whole lot extra in terms of bling. So what we've done here is since it's a value oriented sort of bling worthy case, we're essentially doubling down on that value oriented bling and using the Noxia Redux as the outtake. Now, because this is a V3 Xeon build, we're going to wanna to set this boot option one to UEFI. We're gonna to have to do a UEFI install in order to unlock all our turbo multipliers. And then after that, we're gonna to have to do a few additional steps, which I've done in a complete tutorial, and I'll put the link up here, where essentially we load in our own custom BIOS, and then we insert our own code into this UEFI install, and then we're good to go in terms of getting 3.3 gigahertz on all 12 cores, 24 threads. So now that this build is all finito dandito, we've done the temperature tests on both the GPU and the CPU. And I've got to say, I am blown away by these numbers because what we've got here is a case that's on the CPU stress test, we're getting one degree lower with the side glass on. And then on the GPU test, we're getting the same temperatures with temper glass on versus off. And so what this means basically is that this case is really well designed in that the mesh at the front allows air to breathe in easily. You've also got that fractured mesh design, which is, I guess it's coming in in 2020. It's a new uh, look, depending on which angle you look at it. You're gonna get the light sort of scattering off the mesh in different ways, but the noise is also extremely quiet in this case. Now, keep in mind, we are using a uh, Noxua exhaust fan here, which does make a big difference in my opinion. But that being said, you're getting a case with an enclosed power supply shroud ample cable management at the back. You have the ability to mount a 280 or 360 mil rad at the front and the top. And on top of all that, there's no sharp edges and building in this thing is just extremely easy to do. Anyone can build in this thing. You're gonna have no problems whatsoever. So there really is nothing to critique about this except you'd wanna go out and get a good exhaust fan. But that being said, it'll work with pretty much any high-end system. And the price for this case is coming in at a really good target. So basically summing up the TD500, this thing is an absolute winner at its price point. You also get that RGB remote included. So if you don't have an RGB header on your motherboard, then you can use that to control your RGB. The problem with that is though, is that you will have to uh, be able to access the switch. But as you can see, I've just got it on color cycling and I've just put the remote at the back of the case with the SATA cable. And another thing is too, is it doesn't have native support for a vertical mount on the side here on the PCIe, but uh, most vertical mount kits that you get anyway can utilize the existing PCIe brackets to vertically mount up that way. So a massive W here from Cooler Master on this case right here. But that being said, let's get some games installed and see some FPS on this banger right here. And we just finished testing out all those games and in Fortnite and also uh, Call of Duty, I even just left the capturing on while I was benchmarking. And so the FPS here, over 140 in COD Warzone. So if you're going with a 144 uh, Hertz monitor, it's gonna pair really nicely with this combo. And then we step it up to Fortnite, we've got over 240 FPS. We're seeing there on average 270 FPS on competitive settings. And I've tested uh, Fortnite in the past and what you want to do is even if you're playing for big money, you will get a 240 hertz monitor and then cap the game as in-frame setting at 240. And then from there, you'll be getting the best input lag coupled with DX12. Uh, then I stepped across to Dota 2 and we're getting around 185 FPS and the 1% 0.1% lows across all these three games are also really good too. So really smooth experience 
with this 12 core and also the RTX 2060 Super. Though of course, keep in mind, if you wanna go with a build like this, then you will have to do that V3 unlock hack, which takes about 10 minutes once you know what you're doing. But of course, if it's your first time, it could take you about an hour, even two hours to get your head around the whole process. But that said, we've got now a build that looks really good. It's got the 12 core 24 thread advertisement. So if I go to resell this thing, it's not only gonna look really good with that 12 cores, it's also gonna have a 32 gigabyte branded option there, as well as a two terabyte NVMe SSD. Someone is gonna lose it when they see this add up for sale. And the best thing about this whole thing is it really didn't break the bank a whole lot. We came over in US dollar terms, just over a thousand bucks. In Australia, we're coming under that 2K mark. And I do feel the pain right now, like prices of hardware is going up. But if we sort of circumnavigate the murky waters, then we can find out what good deals are still out there and pick them up and really make some magic happen. Because I'll tell you guys something about SSDs at the very least. Um, I'm speaking to some direct contacts in China about prices and SSD prices as well as DDR4 memory. That stuff's gonna be uh, pretty much normal very soon. It looks like the supply chains are absolutely fine there. But the funniest thing is, the oddest thing out of it all is that DDR3 RAM prices have gone up in price and they don't look like they're coming down to prices that say we saw four months ago anytime soon. So that's the most interesting thing. So that's why in today's build, we went with that DDR4 memory combo because it really doesn't cost a whole lot more than DDR3 at this point in time if you're buying some brand new RAM. Speaking of that X99 Atomiter board that we used, however, that thing's okay. You'll definitely wanna use like we did here a downdraft cooler, get some cooling on the VRM if you're using a 12 core. But that being said, it did an okay job. I mean, it supports M.2 as well, which was a big bonus for a $76 motherboard. And of course you got eight SATA ports on there. You got USB 3 if you wanna do VR with this thing. And you've also got the Haswell uh, AVX2 instructions and all that latest jazz to go with this thing. So it ended up checking out B okay. And I do say B because the onboard audio does leave a little bit more to be desired there in that it was very tinny. So if you do pick up this motherboard and you're serious about gaming or doing anything else for that matter, and you're not using the HDMI or DisplayPort audio, then do get yourself either an external DAC or a sound card. And with all that out of the way, we've got another Tech Yes special here. That is, we've got the bling, we've got the price performance, and we've got the solid deets on the spec sheet. Honestly, this thing even smells good. Though do let us know in the comments section below what you think of this thing, So I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I mean, would you improve something? Would you change something? Of course, would you go with the cliche Ryzen option? I wanna hear it all in the comments. And speaking of hearing it all, we've got the question of the day, which comes from Sang Tran. And they ask, Windows 7 can use this guide. I use one and Z X99 TF. E5 2678 V3. And they're referring to the V3 Xeon Unlock tutorial. And basically with Windows 7, I have no idea because I've been using Windows 10 for quite a long time now. If it was to work on Windows 7, then you're gonna have to do a Windows UEFI install. That's the most important thing. If you can't do that, then it's not gonna work on Windows 7. But if you can, then you can try uh, booting up into shell from your boot disk and then uh, use that update, the microcode, and go from there, and it could possibly work. I just haven't tried it personally. Maybe someone who has used it in the past and has got it to work with Windows 7 can help you out in the comments. And with all that out of the way, if you guys have been enjoying this content and you stayed this far and you're not yet subscribed and you wanna see the videos as soon as they drop here at Tech yes City, then the sub button, ring that bell, it's down there. And before I get on out of here, I do gotta apologize. I have been in a little bit of a hiatus lately. Basically, you haven't seen me, and that's because I've went through the proverbial tech yes downer. Now we're coming on the way back up, fellas. So get ready for the awesome content, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh.